name is Erica Almiron, and I'm the executive director of Juntos. Uh, Juntos is an immigrant rights organization that's based out of South Philadelphia. Uh, and we are here today to bring to light a very compelling story of a case that we are lifting Again, up. Again, thanks everybody so much for coming out today. Um, as Erika mentioned, my name is Miguel Andrade. I am an organizer uh, with the community organization Juntos. Juntos is a Latino immigrant rights organization based in, uh, in the Philadelphia area. We do a lot of advocacy and organizing work around um, um, Latino immigrant rights uh, here in the city. It's, it's no under, understatement when I say that um, immigrant communities are under attack right now by this current administration. And I think that what we're here talking about is another prime example of how our humanity isn't seen by the current administration. Um, we're here to speak on, uh, on, a, on a really heartbreaking case that, that happened just um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we have Paul here, um, Paul Frame, uh, who is Jose Ivan Nunez's husband. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, for coming out here. Um, so Jose Ivan Nunez and Paul Frame were actually going to uh, the USCIS office here in Philadelphia at what was our in West Philly at like 40th and Market. They were doing their I-130 marriage petition. And during that interview process, something sort of unprecedented that even I have been doing immigrant festival for a while, I haven't seen happen, but immigration agents came and stormed during the, the interview and, and detained Ivan. Uh, and took him away from, from his loved ones that day there. What should have been sort of a, a very sort of quick interview and a happy moment, you know, going through that process, that's like the last process during the immigration uh, interview that they usually go through. Uh, we once again saw this current administration and you know, a rogue agency that is ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, tear another one of our families apart. Uh, and so Ivan right now is currently in detention at the York County Detention Center right outside of Philadelphia. Um, and I think it's really, really also important to, to, to point out that we often hear a lot from anti-immigrant you know, uh, sentiment that everybody is always saying people should be, you know, quote unquote, doing the right thing or getting in line. But here's a prime example that it doesn't matter what it is that we do as long as you are our an immigrant person of color, this administration is targeting us. Uh, this is a, a, a case where our community uh, was going to sort of through all the, the you know, jumping through all the hoops in order to keep our family together, right, to keep their loved ones together in unity. Um, and we saw, uh, now that they're being torn apart, um, this is an attack on immigrant communities. We really want to emphasize that. This is also an attack on the LGBTQ community as well. Um, we really need to bring up the intersectionality that is happening in this, in this instance, where again, this is an administration that has it out for all of us, you know, LGBTQ people, immigrant people, people of color in general. Um, and we are calling for the public to stand in support of Ivan's case to any other families that are going through the immigration uh, process that are being torn apart by the system and we're calling on the public that this is our chance to, to step, step into action, right? We know that a lot of people are outraged by what is happening in this country. This is a moment where we need to take action. There is a petition going around uh, through the Junto social media as well as the delay social media camp, uh, presence. We really ask everybody to sign this petition and really share this story so that people are aware of what is actually happening to our communities. Um, to Paul, I just want to say that we are with you. We will stand behind you every step of the way. Uh, and to Ivan, um, lo voy a decir en español para que uh, sepa, estamos con usted. Vamos a hacer todo lo que podamos hacer para lograr que usted sea libre y esté con su familia. Uh, y para terminar la separación de nuestras comunidades y nuestras familias. Uh, thank you. Being here today. Um, my name is Nikki Lopez and I'm the executive director of GALE. Uh, we are a queer Latinx social justice organization located in North Philadelphia. And as of today, still remain the only organization in the state of Pennsylvania that actively uh, advocates for and fights for the rights of LGBTQ Latinos in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and so Yvonne's case um, in particular is, is really striking a chord with our communities. Um, and if anything, it highlights, uh, particularly for our communities, 
the importance of doing intersectional work, right? Oftentimes, particularly under this administration and before, uh, the most marginalized and, and oppressed of communities, um, there's sort of a divide and conquer that occurs, right? That we're siloed into our own uh, senses of separatism and that what only affects our communities, it only affects our communities and that we should handle it as such. Yvonne's case showcases how we can't continue to follow that model, right? That marriage is just not enough for queer people, and particularly queer people of color in, in this country. Um, this is an individual and this is a couple that attempted to do things under the bureaucratic systems that were just and legal, right? Applying for the necessary paperwork, seeking the necessary documentation, and instead were criminalized for doing so. And so if anything, this is an example of how this country continues to see our communities, to criminalize us. And so this is really a call for not only the LGBTQ communities here in Philly of how you can support this case, but also other Latino communities as well, right? There are immigrants who are under attack. And in this case, citizenship does not matter because this administration still sees us as how they see us, right? And so this is a call, for to, especially from Gale, to, to share with your networks this petition. I want to see by tomorrow a thousand signatures, if not more. I want to see it shared nationally. Because Yvonne's case, unfortunately, is one case of thousands that are happening, of thousands of, of lives being torn apart, of family members being torn apart. And this is a case of love, right? And I've always been a believer in any, in any work for liberation, in any work for revolution, in any work uh, for, for families. It's about a call of radical love, right? Radical love is what is building our communities. Radical love is what is saving our communities. When I think about so many communities within this last couple of months that have been devastated, I think about folks in Puerto Rico, I think about the young people in Florida, I think about the women across the country, I think about LGBTQ communities, and all have been driven by a force of love, a force of radical love. So I hope you all here today can see and I hope you can see as well, Paul, that you have a community of folks here who are willing to practice intentional radical love. And we will bring Yvonne home. And please, 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 this is a call. Practice radical love in your communities. Find out how you can get involved. There are a number of organizations here. We're here in the LGBT Center and the William Way Center. So thank you, Chris, for posting this and really this being the focal and the center point of our communities and our issues. Um, as my grandfather would say, from a Young Lords Party movement, Siga Palante, Palante Sigue, we'll continue moving forward. This is not an easy thing for me. In uh, August of 2014, I attended a wedding outside of Love in Reading, Pennsylvania. I looked across the table, and there was a very good looking Latino man there. A couple months later, um, we went on our first date, and then in uh, July of 2015, we took a trip out to Las Vegas. Yvonne wasn't a gambler, but I was the gambler. I went with him and I proposed in July of 2015 to him. In uh, April of 2016, me and Yvonne, his name is Jose, Jose Noel Nunez Martinez, we all call. They say Yvonne, I say Ivan. He is the love of my life. We had a uh, big wedding out in um, Chester County and in the Lovewoods Corner area, close to my house where I live in Northern Chester County. And um, up to this date, it's been about two years that we've been married. We, we have a great relationship. Um, and every day that a Latino man, I've learned a lot from this culture. He's learned a lot from my culture. What I'd like to say is to his family in Reading, Pennsylvania, his family's in California, his family in New Jersey, and just recently, he was taken on January 31st after a meeting. His mother arrived that Friday from Mexico, who he has not seen for eight years. She was here on a three-week visa. She left two days ago, not being able to see her son, it is just to me and him heartbreaking. 
to all of his nieces and nephews, his brothers and sisters, and he has a huge family I'm behind that. You support me, and we're going to get through this together. In his life, his grandmother was everything to him. His grandmother passed away many years ago. But getting back to the story, the day of the meeting, he told me that that morning he had a premonition about his grandmother. He was, was very close, so we went into the meeting. I was the one pushing Ivan to go through this process. I said, let's do this the legal way. We're going to be, we're going to go to this I-130 meeting. We went to the meeting. We got the marriage certificate, which we were approved for. We went to the meeting. We thought we were going to be in and out in a half hour. Shortly after the meeting began, they asked me to leave and told me I wasn't coming back into the room. I just thought they had a few questions for Yvonne. And then after that, Audrey, the lawyer, came out and said that we need to talk. And I said, where's Yvonne? We went downstairs, and she told me that I said pick him up. Very difficult for me to understand that we were going through the process the correct way. I was the one that pushed Ivan to do this. He was a little skeptical. I said, let's go through the process. Let's become legal so we have no worries. So we go to the meeting. And they take him out, and this is what happens. My thought is, who that is not legal is going to go through this process? Who's going to go into fear with what is going on right now? I miss Ivan tremendously. I see him two or three times a week up in York prison. It's very emotional when I go up there with him. I tell him all the support that he has in the world behind him. He is concerned, but I tell him we're going to move forward. We're going to look to the next day. We're going to count on the system. Um, I have two children. One is Evan, my son, and I have a daughter, and they miss, they miss their stepfather tremendously. They've been great support for us. I'm just hoping that with all the support from everyone, the media, the organizations, the law firm, that we have a quick end to this nightmare. I am very saddened, but I'm strong. I've been through a lot in my life. I'm in my own business. I had a previous partner who passed away with brain cancer that I took care of for months, and I think I can get through this. And I treasure to Ivan, and he comes home and meets with me very shortly. And I appreciate all the support from everyone. Thank you. Welcome to the William Way LGBT Community Center. I'm here to say that the LGBT community stands in full support of Paul and Yvonne to make sure that we, as, we organize our community to get behind this issue. I want to say that the LGBT community for decades has recognized the importance of fighting for immigrant populations. We saw that in 1980 when Cubans arrived in the Mario boat lift and LGBT organizers through the MCC church showed up at deportation camps around the country, Spanish speakers, and helped Latino queers to get uh, integrated into communities. That powerful work made sure that they had the support in whatever city they ended up in in the United States. Subsequently, during the AIDS epidemic, we again fought for the needs of immigrant LGBT people, the great work of Galay over many decades to make sure particularly the Latino communities and other communities of color had their HIV issues addressed. And I want to mention that we're really pleased today to have two activists from those movements. John Cunningham, who went to Port Indian Town Gap in 1980 uh, to support the Mariel Boatlift immigrants. And John James, who organized uh, against the AIDS epidemic for many years and made sure that the best treatments were available to those folks. We've learned over these many decades that if we don't stand in solidarity for immigrants, uh, we're next. And in fact, because we have so many LGBT people within in immigrant communities, we don't even separate them out. They're a part of our family. Uh, and so we've been working closely with Juntos and Galay to make sure that they have the resources and visibility to make sure that this issue stays front and center. I want to thank Nikki Lopez and Erica from Juntos for your incredible leadership and say that we stand behind you. We'll march behind you and provide resources. We will fundraise. We will provide space here. We will provide activists. 
So this is more than just a press, press conference. This is a life and death issue for her. Yes, yes. William Way is not the only folks here today. Sandra Thompson and Heshi Zinman from the LGBT Elder Initiative are here speaking out for the voices of senior LGBT immigrants. Uh, Evan Thornburg from the Office of LGBT Affairs. Uh, this mayor often makes the point that when Irish immigrants came here in the middle of the 19th century, that they faced the same sorts of hostility and riots and hatred and anger as we see nowadays. And now we see Irish folks leading our political government and making the case that we have to be just as welcoming and supportive of the immigrant populations of the 21st century. So I know that Mayor Kenny, Amber Heights, and the Office of LGBT Affairs strong, stand solidly behind this work. Uh, Mel Heifetz, one of our greatest philanthropists is here with us today, who for over 30 years has invested so much money, not only in our LGBT community, but in many communities to fight this sort of hatred, and I know that he stands against President Trump more strongly than anyone as a voice to say we have to confront the hatred coming out of the White House. So thanks for being here, Mel. Uh, and Matt Byersmith from the AIDS Fund, we're so glad you're here. Uh, again, bringing that connection to the fight against the AIDS epidemic that continues. Just to make sure I didn't forget anyone. But for everyone else from the LGBT community here, so we, we really welcome you and thank you. Uh, so I just want to say thanks again. We're going to be leading, uh, following behind Galay and Puntos and making sure that this continues to be an important issue moving forward. Thank you. I'm finding so, so many, so many different, mentality different mentality today. It seems hard. It's hard. It's hard. It seems it challenging. Seems challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, so, so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built for this. I think that I think we, that we all have a purpose in life. And mine's and mine's going to take on a task that most of us back away from.